Praise the Lord. And welcome again to the State of the Union. The Union which is between Jesus and the Church. And our guiding word is still tell my people to return to me says the Lord. God says to tell his people, his people, to return to him. He says, tell my people to return to me. And yesterday, in continuation of the series, of talking about returning to God in himself we refer to the matter of his patterns his established discernible patterns from the scriptures and the one we took yesterday in particular is the matter of revelation he expects us to operate by what he shows us or what he tells us. In more popular language today, it will be being led by the Spirit of God. And I want us to look at that today. Being led by the Spirit of God. So when he says, tell my people to return to me, he is asking us to return to that dimension where, like he said in John chapter 10, that he puts forth his sheep and he goes ahead of them. He puts forth his sheep and he goes ahead of them as if like the human shepherd who has gone ahead to seek out pasture and perhaps a watering hole for his animals to drink. He has gone ahead, or even if he doesn't physically go ahead, he has a way by which he can discern nearby water or how he can recognize good pasture for his animals. Now that is the work of a shepherd. Now the famous shepherd boy in Psalm 23 he says the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words there is an automatic provision if we are led by the Lord. He will lead us to green pastures. He will lead us beside still waters. Why do we need the water to be still? So we can drink. In other words, the good shepherd has the responsibility of making sure that we are provided for. Now, there are many scriptures which point at this behavior of the Lord, but he has put it forth by himself, first in Psalm 23, and then now, like I said, in John chapter 10, where he refers to himself as the good shepherd. A good shepherd, by implication, he knows his responsibility and he goes about dealing with it. So today, let us look at some, some of the things which pertain to this business of being led by the Spirit of God. Jesus was led by the Spirit of God. You know how I know? 
He said it by himself. He doesn't do anything save that which his father first taught him. But more importantly, or more critically, he says that by the eternal spirit, Jesus went to the cross. By the eternal spirit. If he allowed the spirit to lead him to death, what else do you think he will not let the spirit lead him? Now, there are many ways by which the spirit may want to lead us. And at this juncture, I must quickly point out, hearing from God and being led by the Spirit are not quite the same. They are not quite the same. Because being led by the Spirit does not necessarily mean that you are going to hear from God. In one place he says that he will lead you by his eyes. In another place he says that you will hear a voice behind you telling you the way to go. They are two different things. If you have ever lived in a home where there is a mother figure, at least I did, and my mother did what I'm about to talk about, there are times she will give you an indication of what she wants to do just by looking at you. Like some say, she will give you the eye. If there are visitors in the parlor and you are still sitting down watching TV, my mother is not going to say a word. She's just going to look at you. And you will know to leave the sitting room. Or you will know to stop the thing you are doing or shut up or walk you will know we lived with her so we know if you don't respond after the visitor leaves you are going to get five fingers on your back her full palm on your back and you remember the next time she looks at you you first leave the room even if you don't understand why she's looking especially when there are people you first leave the room so Yesterday we said, we have so walked away from God, we have either forsaken his patterns, or we have failed to recognize his patterns, or we have failed to follow his pattern of waiting or seeking or following after revelation. So today, having forsaken his place, it has become very difficult to be led of the Spirit in the church. Such things have become unpopular. Yet, we all claim to want a move of the Spirit. We all want revival. We want the Spirit to move. We want to see God in action. Yet, when He attempts to move us, we immediately quench it because He does not suit our theology or our expectations or it makes us uncomfortable or challenges us or challenges our place of respectability in the assembly. Let me say that again. That when the Holy Spirit attempts or tries to move us, we immediately quench the move because it does not suit our theology or our expectations or it makes us uncomfortable or challenges our place of respectability in the assembly. He can lead in so many different ways, I've said already. He can show us in the direction to go just by making us uncomfortable where we are. He wants to move you away from there. So sometimes God Sometimes the very fact of discomfort is an indication of God wanting to make a move or God wanting you to make a move. He wants you to get up from that point to somewhere else, whatever that may turn out to be. So sometimes the very fact that something is uncomfortable is an indication that it is from God. Sometimes the very fact that what is being suggested to you or, or, or the option in front of you sounds silly, foolish, can be the very pointer to the fact that it is the Lord. Now we have to know these things. Okay, I've, 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 I'm about to lose a battle here. 
I have tried not to say a word about what's going on in my country right now. Within a space of three, four days, two Christians have been gruesomely murdered. And now there's a hue and cry. Now everybody's talking. And I've tried not to say a word about that. Why? What I have to say is going to sound silly, which is, don't defend yourself. Don't take vengeance. Don't retaliate. If anything, keep your mouth shut. Not because we don't have a mouth with which to speak. Not because we can't retaliate. Not because we're not wise enough to do whatever it is. But you have to look in the scriptures. What is the provision of God? Even if you don't know what the Spirit is getting, wants you to do right now. What is it that is written? What is the general sense of the scriptures concerning when Christians have been attacked? If you understand the scriptures, you will see that the general sense is for you to take it like the sheep that you are. Now, when you say that at a time like this, where everybody seems to be in a knee-jerk type of reaction, it's going to sound silly. It's going to sound weak. It's going to sound like you're capitulating. But the issue is, what would the Lord have you do? No matter what you feel or what you think, what would the Lord have you do? I can right away give you at least 10 different examples from the scriptures which indicate that you take it quietly. Rather than go into a knee-jerk reaction, what would the Lord have us do? So I almost want to ask, show me in the Bible one time where it says to defend yourself. I mean Christians. I'm not talking about the Jews. Christians. Christians. So many examples. So many examples from the scriptures where they, they were enjoined to take it for different possible reasons. Take it. If you can't take it, run away. Go to a different location. But well, like I said, the leading of the Spirit can so easily be quenched because it doesn't suit our theology. It doesn't suit our expectations. It makes us appear weak. Yet, the Bible says that God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Not that we are to create the, the situations of weakness by ourselves. Not that we are to create situations which make us look foolish. But that in allowing such situations, we create the opportunity for God's strength to be revealed. But you say, oh no, they will take us as fools. Oh, they will think we are weak. Yes, they bully you or they employ bullying tactics because they are already afraid of you. They can't handle you. That's why bullies are bullies. Bullies are not bullies because they are stronger. They are bullies because in, in their heart they are scared. They are weaklings. So they employ or deploy bullying tactics to gain the earth and run you out of town. Now, if we don't understand the provisions of scripture, we will begin to behave like them. And then we lose. No matter what you gain, you lose. So the Bible says, for example, and I'm not by this calling anybody names, but just the principle. The Bible says, don't answer a fool like a fool. For example, I'm saying, it's a principle. That is, if you now answer him like a fool, we have to now wonder who is now the fool. Because two of you are going to be engaged in a shouting match. So who is then the fool? So I said that sometimes the leading of the Spirit can come 
in the form of discomfort, trying to get you onto a new dimension of experience. So he lights fire under your seat to cause you to jump up from that seat. Maybe because he wants you standing, or maybe because he wants you to change your seat, or he wants you to change your location. But the thing is, he not only leads with his eyes, which sometimes we might call a witness of the spirit, sometimes he can lead by discomfort. Sometimes he can show you the direction he wants you to go by shutting every other door and squeezing you in the direction he wants you to go so you have really no choice but to go that way. But the real issue is, God says, tell my people to return to me. In returning to him, we are saying today to be led by the Spirit of God. And the things by which the Spirit will lead will not be different from the Word of God that he has already unveiled by writing it down. That's why I said, what is it that has been written? What is the general sense of the scriptures when it concerns, for example, being attacked because you are who you are? Or being persecuted? What is the general sense of the scriptures by way of responding? One time Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Another time he says, don't resist evil. They are all in the Bible. Don't resist evil means what? You are going to encourage the attacker. Turn the other cheek means what? You are going to encourage the attacker. You see, as a sheep is led to the slaughter, is dumb. So Jesus was taken to the cross and he didn't utter a word of self-defense. As a sheep is led to the slaughter, as, well, as a sheep led to the slaughter, is dumb. So Jesus was led to the slaughter. Not just that. Next verse, he says justice was taken from him. And no one can count his generation. That is, if we want to call generation to be his progeny, he never got married, he never had children. So no one can count generation in that sense referring to him. Because he was cut off. That's our example. That's our example. Now these things have been written, the Bible says, for our learning. Why? So he can use it to lead us in the direction he wants us to go part time. I am tempted to say God will not lead you beside his word. So the more of the word you know, the easier it's going to be for him to lead you. So he says, tell my people to return to me. Not just returning to being led by the Spirit, but returning to him in having a rough, I call it walking knowledge. Walking knowledge, having a rough idea of what's there. You may not be able to quote all the scriptures yet. You may not have memorized them. You may not be able to recite all of them. You may not have meditated on all of them. You may not have studied all of them. Maybe. But have a rough idea of what we are about. In the face of clear danger, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. He says our warfare is not carnal. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against spiritual entities. If he says we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, why are you talking about wrestling against flesh and blood? He says, come back to me and be led by my spirit. Now, if you are certain that you are led by the spirit, then do whatever you are being led to do. That's okay. But he says, tell my people to return to me and be led by the Spirit. Now, this, this, this Spirit's primary job is to take off what belongs to Jesus and show it to us. In other words, that which is Jesus, he will make manifest to us. And that which is Jesus is already written in the Scriptures. That's why I began to talk about things pertaining to him just now. He will take of what belongs to Jesus, what pertains to Jesus, and he will show it to us. He will teach us all things. But then, who is this Spirit? Who is this Holy Spirit? 
He says, come back to me in being led by the Spirit. I am aware that people find it difficult to understand or appreciate God as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. That's okay. It is possible for God to indicate to you the direction He wants you to go, according to the Scriptures, by leading you by the heart. But do you even recognize when your heart is beating in one direction or the other as different from when your brain is talking? For example, I'm saying, one way to, to recognize the leading of the Spirit, for example, the Bible says the, the wisdom of God is foolishness to men. So that idea that comes to you, that you immediately reject because it sounds stupid, it doesn't make sense, or like we say today, it does not add up. The very fact of those things should even make you more careful because it's more and more likely that it is God. The fact that it doesn't make sense to you, the fact that it sounds stupid, the fact that it sounds foolish, the fact that it sounds weak, is more and more indicative that that's God speaking to you. I don't want to get into the discourse of the various ways by which God speaks to his people. I did that already in an earlier, in an earlier broadcast. But today, See, let me tell you something. My heart is heavy. My heart is grieved. That's why I said, I am almost losing the battle not to talk about what's going on, but rather to focus on this business of being led by the Spirit. What would God have you do? You can't know that unless you first return to Him. So, in the spirit of what I'm saying, can we take time out? He says, tell my people, that's the church, can we take time out in returning to God to seek his face about how we are to proceed? If it has been your way, it doesn't take time. The problem is, we walked away. That's why he's saying, tell my people to return. If we had been with him as a corporate entity, if we had been with him, we would know. But now there is a crisis. Tell my people to come back home. Tell my people to return to me. Tell my people to return to the place where I can lead them in the direction to go. I know my time is out. I promise to keep these things short and simple. But I hope you got it. Because if you are hearing this, then it's for you. God wants you to return to the place of being led by his spirit rather than your emotions for example rather than by your consternation rather than by your knee jerk reaction you know knee jerk something happens and your hand shoots forward without even thinking it is when you return that you will discover what is in the mind of God I'll give you a personal example and then we close. Exactly 20 years ago, exactly, I was supposed to be moving into a new, a new home, a new, a new place of living. God had shown me the place, I had gotten in touch with the person who was holding the keys. They had asked me to pay a certain sum, I had paid it. But now there was a three month delay in handing the keys over to me after I paid. Yes, it was becoming uncomfortable because it was uncomfortable for my family where we were. Now, inside me, I began to be uncomfortable. I was disgusted at that behavior. And so I took it to the Lord. This is what he said. He said, this is the devil doing this. He knows that if he can frustrate you enough, you are very likely to speak out. And that that's exactly what he wants. If you speak out, the fellow holding the keys is going to hear about it. And he is going to react to whatever you have spoken out. And he's going to return your money to you and tell you to get lost. 
then you would have lost out. Having waited three months, you have lost that time and you're going to restart the whole process. He said, so keep quiet and don't say anything even under direct provocation. I thought it was a joke. Not quite a few hours after that, I got the direct provocation. I got the direct provocation. And while the provocation was going on, I remembered what I had been told in the morning. So I shut my mouth. He said, this is the devil trying to get you to react so that he can cause you to lose the house. Think about these things. If we return, God is well and able to lead us in the direction we should go. He's well and able to give us wisdom about what to do about time. But first, we must return. So he says to tell you, tell my people to return to me. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time. And until then, keep the peace. Keep the peace. So long as it is up to you, be at peace with all men. See you again tomorrow. God bless.